is those move over a little bit. Um, <laughs> we're talking about genitive absolutes, okay? This is the last piece of grammar in this lesson um, in unit 11. And um, what does this mean, absolute, in terms, in a grammatical term? Okay, we know what absolute means otherwise. It means something that, well, it comes from the Latin uh, verb absolvo, which means uh, to, to separate something out from something else, mm. to, to divorce it from something. So in grammatical terms, that's what this is. It's an absolute construction. It's one that's grammatically separated from the rest of the sentence. And when we're talking about genitive absolutes, we're talking about a clause, a subordinate clause, that has no uh, uh, grammatical links to the rest of the sentence. It's a very weird idea. Mm -hmm. It has a conceptual link, mm -hmm. but not a grammatical one, okay? The only thing that's grammatically linked in a genitive absolute are the elements to each other, right. okay? Um, so so how can this be? Um, well, here's a, here's my stupid example of what a sentence with a grammatically absolved subordinate clause is. When King Tut came, you can write this down. Okay. When King Tut came, they tethered their elephants. <laughs> who did? <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter who they are, as long as it's not King Tut, right? You can figure out, you can make up whatever story you want to go with this sentence, okay? But the thing to realize is that you do say things like that when there's no grammatical relationship between any of the words in the two sentences, right? Okay, you get the idea? Mm -hmm. So what do you do in Greek, okay, if you, if you have something like that? Well, we just learned one way you can do this. You have a word for when, and you can say King Tut, and it's... It's, it's a past definite temporal clause, right? But, you know, Greek loves participles, right? And it loves to do subordinate clauses with participles. But, so, so what evolved was a way to do things like this with a participle, but then you have a serious problem because participles are adjectives, mm -hmm. and what are they going to agree with, okay? Well, if you think about it, when King Tut came, the, the, if you're gonna make came into a participle, the answer is simple, it's gonna agree with King Tut. Mm -hmm. But what case is King Tut going to be in, right? He has no grammatical relationship to any word in the, in the rest of the sentence, right? So here's what happened. And effectively what happened is that in the absence of anything else, King Tut got put in the genitive case, <laughs> okay? okay? There's a There are some very interesting and weird reasons for this, okay? But that's what happened. So what you do when you want to make a, a grammatically separate uh, subordinate clause into a participial clause is you put the noun, that's the subject of the subordinate clause in the genitive case, and therefore the participle that agrees with it in the, sub, in the, in the, in the that noun is going to also be in the genitive case. It can be genitive singular or genitive plural, depending upon it's one king tut or several uh, horses or whatever, mm -hmm. or, or princes, when, when the princes came, okay, then you'd have genitive plurals, okay? Um, but as long as, the, as long as the subject of the subordinate clause, this is a key thing, and any dependent verbs, uh, any dependent nouns, but the subject of the, of the subordinate clause and the subject of the main clause cannot be the same person, right? Mm -hmm. King, taught and they, okay? So um, what does this mean when you when you when you're reading Greek? Okay, this is the trickiest part. The little light bulb has to go off in your head. Okay, mm -hmm. you see a noun in the genitive case and a and a participle agreeing with it in the genitive case, and there can be other nouns because that noun can be the subject of a of a of a genitive absolute, right? Mm -hmm. So you can say when King Tut built the pyramid. Okay, and the pyramid is going to be the direct object of the genitive participle. Right. So normally you'd put that in between the King Tut and the and the participle that goes with it. So you make a clump, right? You make you know how Greek tends to clump things together that are the same. So you can have other words, but you've got to keep your eyes open for the noun in the genitive and the participle in the genitive that agree with each other. And then the light bulb has to go off in your head and you say, Oh, that's a genitive absolute, we gotta translate this as a clause. And you have to convert it. From, from genitives into, into a subordinate clause in which the genitive noun is the subject and the participle is the verb. So it's a heavy duty thing to get used to. Mm -hmm. Okay, And we're going to try and do it in exercises and stuff like that. But that's the basic idea.